Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Andy here with today's devotional, and today is Friday, and we're looking through the book of Acts, and we're up to Acts chapter 12. And we have a very curious episode uh, which involved the death of King Herod Agrippa I. Let's read uh, the second half of Acts 12, verse 19 to verse 24. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. He had been quarrelling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. He now joined together and sought an audience with him. After securing the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king, he asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for the food supply. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a god, not of man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. Here in Acts 12, we once again have one of those situations where you hear a story and you think, my life, what a weird story. What a strange story to have. And this really actually have happened. I mean, here is King Herod Agrippa, the persecutor of the church, a very pro-Jewish uh, faith leader, uh, a Romanized Jewish ruler who had grown up himself in Rome uh, with the future Emperor Claudius as his friend. And he gets into a quarrel with the people of Tyre and Sidon and ends up being eaten by worms from the inside. What on earth is this all about? And what can we learn from this for our lives today? Well, we can firstly see that verse 20, this quarrel with Tyre and Sidon, um, had been a time where Tyre and Sidon needed to negotiate with, uh, with Herod because they depended on him for their substance, for their food. And this is recorded outside by the Jewish historian Josephus. He said that on the Passover in AD 44 in Caesarea, uh, there were some Roman games that were ordered by the emperor. And according to Josephus, on the second morning of those games, Agrippa addresses the audience wearing his royal robes, but he had adorned them with silver, perhaps to agitate the people of Tyre and Sidon, of which he, uh, he was negotiating with, proving that he had power over them, verse 20. And it says that the sunlight so caught the silver of his robes that he looked like some sort of Phoenician sun god. And therefore the people did cry out according to history. This is the voice of a god and not a man because he looked like a god, they would say. Verse 22. It says in the Bible, verse 23, the King Herod, this Romanized Jew, did not give God God of the Jews did not give the God of the Jews honor and you know dismissing their statement and so the angel of the Lord then cut him down you see ultimately he who destroyed the church was himself destroyed one that beheaded the apostle James was noticed by the Lord the one that imprisoned uh, the apostle Peter and the apostle Peter of course got out of Herod's clutches, well, King Herod did not get out of the Lord's clutches. We see that this Herod, who made himself to be a bit of a deity in the way he looked, did not stand for long when the Lord was against him. Verse 23, the dramatic ending of Herod. He was eaten by worms. Oh, my. Josephus records that... Time on the second day in the very games, he doubled over with agony, so much so uh, that his, his adamum adm, 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 was in such pain that after five days he died in tremendous agony at the age of 54. Now, other historians suspected that Blastus, verse 20, the trusted servant, had poisoned him. Others suggest that, like his grandfather, Herod the Great, the great who also died of worms that came out of his gut and into his genitals and ate him alive, um, that he had possibly either a 
cancer that looked like worms when it when it was fully formed and came out of the body and therefore it was like a hereditary cancer or it could even be that he had uh, worms that were in the uh, digestion tract. In fact, Dr. A. Randall Short, the medical professor of Bristol University, stated that intestinal worms were common at that time, and particularly those who had eaten infested pork. Now, pork, of course, wasn't on the list of foods for a Jew to have eaten. So for King Herod and King Agrippa to have died of that, well, that probably proves how true their adherence to the faith was. Whatever it was, this was God's judgment on him. He really therefore was, as was King Herod, Matthew 23, 27, a whitewashed tomb. In other words, he looked good on the outside, but on the inside there was death eating literally away at him whether that was worms or cancer we don't know or whether it's direct judgment of god immediately what we can learn from this passage today is this those who stand against god are going to be judged by god in fact we can have faith in the bible because we see what happened in history recorded not just by Josephus but by Eusebius as well, Acts 12, uh, end of verse 19 and 23, was recorded in secular history. We know what happened to Herod, actually, we know happened because we could read about it in history book. We know that God sees what our leaders do and he judges them. So therefore, when we are praying, we can pray along the lines of Psalm 5, verse 4 to 6, that God will judge evil rulers if they rule in an evil way. Particularly those when we hear about the plight of the persecuted church and Christians in other nations, or we hear around the world where uh, rulers are acting in an evil way under regimes, that God would intervene uh, along the lines of that psalm and judge them. Obviously, uh, we remember the Cultural Revolution in China where Mao cruelly persecuted the church and said that well, God is not. And then one day God said that Mao is not. You see, every human being and every ruler is in the hands of God. And wherefore we can pray for God to intervene in not just countries, but in people's lives. We must recognise that God is in control of everything and every leader, even the evil ones that we hear about and read about the internet and the newspapers hear about the news and what they do but here in the bible it says that the reason why king agrippa was judged herod agrippa was judged was his sin against god by not giving god the glory we need to understand what the bible states is agrippa's judgment uh, he needed to make space to immediately glory to God in that situation later on in Acts 14 we see that Paul and Barnabas when when people fall down to worship them uh, as Zeus and Hermes say no 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 we are not God worship Jesus and they point uh, people to Jesus here Herod doesn't give God the glory at all but takes the adulation that is due for God alone we need to always give God the glory alone in our lives not take the glory for ourselves or want the glory for ourselves maybe there's an act of kindness that you are doing secretly do that in secret let others know about it let the recipients of your acts of kindness know that it's the lord and give glory to him let them not know who it is that's doing it don't trumpet ourselves and all that we have done don't on about how much we've prayed or how much we've given or how much we do but go on about how good god is how much he has given and how much he is to be glorified let the lord be glorified through our lives and let's not seek the glory for ourselves it's a very important lesson to learn today that it's to god and to jesus that we want to give the glory we don't even want glory for the name of our church we want all 
We're always to be the one that's glorified. We want the name of King Jesus to be the one that's lifted up. We want people to love him, not us. We want people to seek him, not us. So let us maybe, even today, evaluate our motivations. Are we seeking self-proclamation? Do we seek glory for ourselves or do we want to point people to Jesus in and through our lives? He is the one to be worshipped and adored. And we are the ones that are to point men and women, boys and girls, to him in every way throughout our lives. Let's do this in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray, will you help us today to seek not glory for ourselves, but to, in every act, in every way in which we serve, to point to Jesus and to point people to him, that they may know the Saviour, that they may rejoice, and that you may be given glory, and that many, many more may come to know you through our lives. Help us to do this, I pray, just to evaluate, evaluate our own lives and where we're putting ourselves forward, putting ourselves first, proclaiming ourselves and not pointing to you. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.